fundamentally anything different, shot selection, or anything like that, otherwise, or just small? Just smaller than that, you know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the shots I take every day, shots I take in another game, so, and like I said, it's been a long time coming. I mean, I think I have one since my freshman year, and that's the last time I can remember one, so uh, it's about time. I mean, you're good when I see you kind of smiling when you on the court, but I just want to talk about this one at home. We were winning. That's why I was smiling. You know, that was, uh, you know, just to come back. You know, we had went on a little drop there, and I was able to hit one. And then uh, Eddie found me wide open, made a great drive, and kicked it out. And then they were knocking down again. And um, these guys had big shots too. I wasn't the only one making shots out there, so it was a full team effort. How much confidence can you like this give you guys? A bunch, a bunch. I mean, we needed it. Like I said, not not winning a D1 game all all first half of the season. But I mean. It's just one win. I mean, it's really nothing for the longest team. So we got to go to Evansville ready to play. They got a great team over there. So, uh, you know, it's on to the next one. Film sessions before before uh, coming into this game, uh, we had looked back on some games and uh, we had them and we had them drafted. We were just losing them and never never get it back. But uh, Talk to the guys and stuff, guys. This is what we watch film for. We gotta stay together and we're gonna be all right. We pull through. Watch film for. We gotta stay together and we're gonna be all right. Focus on that point. Actually, focus. 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 Focus.
you know, we got guys that we had faith in that could do that. Marcus, this was your first taste of Valley play. What was it? Did it up from what you've seen in other games or about the same? Uh, I'd say when the game got close, things got real tight and then you feel like, you know, the energy. And it was a it was a nice crowd, so I mean, we feed off the crowd, too. It was a pretty nice crowd out there, the biggest crowd I've seen so far in the queue. So I think that really helped a lot. But other than that, I mean, I just look at it as any other game, but we really wanted to get this win and start off with the Valley play with a W. So it, it, it helps with the confidence going into Evansville and Drake. Yeah, Nate, you guys have been around the Valley a little bit. Is it a little more intense as you get you know, into the schedule from now on out, here on out? Definitely. I mean, you see teams' faces that you've seen for a couple of years now, and you guys know each other pretty well. So to come in and get this win, our first one, uh, get that monkey off our back, and kind of get a, a good step forward into the Valley play is, is always important. No, I really don't think so because none of us actually played for Coach Henson. Um, from what I hear, he's been a was a great guy, great coach. Um, I'm happy for him that he's got another job, uh, head coaching job. And but I mean, for us, we just looked at it as uh, we needed a win. We needed to come in and beat SIU, not Coach Henson. So we were able to do that, and we're hoping to keep on doing that. Hi guys. <clears throat> Let me make a statement first before we take questions. Um, that's a that's a that's a great win for Paul Lusk and his basketball team, 
And as coaches, sometimes we walk into a locker room and we want to make excuses, point fingers and all that stuff. Let me tell you something. Paul Lust did a great job tonight. Your basketball coach did a great job. His basketball team played a really good game. And they shot the ball well. They executed. They did everything that their staff asked them to do. And hats off to them. There's no doubt that you know exactly how I feel right now, how hard a loss this is, how humiliated I feel. But at the same time, it was a really, really good win for Paul, and I'm happy for Paul Lusk. And you know what? Sometimes coaching's hard. You've got to pull on your big boy pants and handle it and be a man about it. And tonight's one of those times, and that's just the way it goes. Now, you guys can ask me questions. Jerry, <clears throat> do you normally play that much zone, or was that something? No, we never play that much zone. But the thing about it was, Lindell, that when Dan Teal goes down, you know, we're limited. And uh, we can't play a half without – Desmar and a half without Dan Teal. Um, and that's just that's what we're limited. We lost one of our big guys before we made the trip here. We didn't do a press release on it or make an announcement. Our depth was really bad. and uh, But uh, we are definitely the smallest team in the country right now. We are 6'2 uh, and <laughs> under, all five positions. So that's what we've got, the hand that we've been dealt with, and we'll, we'll just have to figure out a way to compete with it. Why did you struggle? Uh Defending their three tonight so much? Well, Todd, I think they hit shots. I mean, I, you know, they're shooting 25% from the three-point line, but tonight they stepped up and made them. And I think you got to give those guys credit. And, uh, you know, sometimes we were guarding them, sometimes we weren't. Shear got off to a great start. They got their confidence. We shot the ball from the three in the first half extremely well. But, uh, uh, like I said, I go back, you got to give these guys credit. I thought they stepped up and made big shots, and uh, they had everything to, uh, hey, pressure was on us. I mean, there's no question, pressure was on us. And, uh, and we played like it. We played like it. And uh, uh, this game, I'm glad it's over. We needed to get it out of the way, and uh, it's been talked about a lot over and over and over, and a lot of pressure on my guys, and we're not mature enough to handle that right now. And Paul's team was tonight, and they they handled it really well. Your team really came out of that second half and, and put together a good string. <coughs> took the lead at one point. You know what? Well, we responded, and then when Dan Till went down, you saw what happened. And uh, you know, and, and and give them credit because they took advantage of it. And uh, we couldn't guard a man. I mean, there's no way we could guard a man, and we had to play more zone than what we wanted to. We knew that they would hit shots. There was a period in time when we took a three-point lead. And we, we held them four straight stops, but we didn't score on our end. And I told my staff at the timeout, I just said, we're in trouble. We can't, we can't get a score now. We're in trouble. And, you know, we're running five out motion, and, you know, Paul's just saying, back up, back up, which that's the same thing I'd yell to our team too. But, uh, uh, I mean, it's just, there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, it just it is what it is. What do you know about Pantillo's injury? Is I think it's really bad. By the time we got him to the bench, it had ballooned up like a tennis ball. Uh, I think it's bad, and uh, I'm not a doctor, but uh, I doubt that he'll play here uh, for quite some time. It, it is his ankle, then? Yes. For sure. It's his ankle, and it's my head. Can <laughs> you talk about offensively with him out, just how that changes? We don't have anybody can score inside, Darren, when he goes out. I love Devontae, bless his heart. He just he just struggles. And uh, now that we don't have Antonio, we're just we're limited. And uh, golly, I wish Merlin was here. I wish we had a, a magician. But uh, it's just where we are. Mary, when you came in tonight, reception from the crowd. Uh, let me address that. Um, I came back for John Pittman's funeral, and I haven't been back in this community uh, in four years. Uh, walking out on the floor in that response that not only I but my, my wife received um, will forever live in my thoughts. This place was extremely good to me for nine years. I've said this all along, and I'll stand by it. Dr. Nitzel fired me. The city of Springfield did not fire me. I think the world of this place. And I'm going to come back now. I feel like I can come back home. This will always be home to me. 
you can't stay a place nine years and develop the friendships that we've had. Everybody I ran into from the moment I got here to when we leave out of here has been more than kind, and they did exactly what they were supposed to do today. I couldn't ask for a better script for someone to give my wife and I a welcome back applause and then switch gears and root for the Bears. That's exactly how it should be. And uh, I have no problem saying that. And uh, my mom and dad still live here, and I'm proud that they live here. And I'm proud that I had nine years in the city of Springfield. And thank you from the bottom of my heart. Did you expect the Do you expect you the being in the Valley uh, as a coach and, and just this conference and, and returning to this conference? Well, Dan, I, I wanted to come home. I had several opportunities to coach. Uh, they weren't the right opportunities for me. I wanted to come home. Uh, I knew when this job came open, uh, the other four jobs had courted me. I, I courted these people, and I, I really wanted this job. Uh, I really fit well in Carbondale. I, I really do. I, 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 I belong in Carbondale, and, uh, and not that I didn't belong here. I, I think I did, but we, we had our moments here, and uh, there was some friction. But I do think I fit better in Carbondale, and I think it'll be a good fit for me over the long run. And uh, I plan on being there quite some time. I've never held back my passion for this conference. I never will. I love the Missouri Valley Conference. It's a basketball conference. It's the second oldest conference in the country. There's tradition. Uh, there's loyalty. There's venues in which you play in night in and night out that absolutely love and support their team. This basketball team was 2-10. and ten. And you come in, and this place is packed tonight. They had 7,662, and they're charging $75 for the first five row. Hey, welcome back, Barry. <laughs> they didn't pay my ass when I was here, but they sure did. They made money off my ass when I came back. So, uh, that's a true statement, too. <laughs> I don't think you have to bleep that out. I think you can do that, Ned, on the FCC. <laughs> I, I, I have to ask, you coached, when you were here, you coached in Hammond Student Center, one of the top 25 hardest places to play in the NCAA. What did you think of the new facility? I loved it. Loved it. I was on the design team met for five years, every committee meeting. I designed this place. Was very much in a part of it. Always wanted to coach in it. <laughs> Always wanted to win my first game in it. But... Uh, uh, but I tell you what I did do today is I went in Hammonds and I sit down in my old chair and I just sit there and reflected and uh, I remember the very last game that I played here and uh, I remember the police officer coming in to the locker room saying, Barry, they won't go home. They want a curtain call. Hammonds, pretty special place for me and uh, pretty special place. This, this is a nice place. This is my place. This is, this is uh, Conzo's and Paul's place. And... Uh, and they're gonna make it. They're gonna make it. It's gonna be a great home court advantage. Barry, what did you like about your freshmen tonight? Pardon? What did you like about your two freshmen? Not a lot. Is there? Uh, I guess they scored. What did they score? Scored twenty. Scored twenty points. Um, you know, they're just still freshmen, Todd. I mean, they're still freshmen, and they're making, uh, they're making progress. But uh, we just can't get them to do exactly what we want them to do right now. But you know, Jalen shot the ball better than he shot it in a long time in the first half. We knew he wouldn't shoot it that way, most likely in the second half. And Anthony's getting a better feel. We're just asking an awful lot of Anthony right now. Guard the other team's best player, you know, be one of our better offensive players. But they're, they're freshmen. They'll, they'll get better. Also with, Coach, also with Anthony, it seems like he's really stepping into as a leader. I saw him a couple of times after older guys. Yeah, he did. He got after him, and it caused a lot of problems there in the last huddle. And, uh, we got some of our older guys have got to suck up their pride and, and understand that it's okay for anybody to get on you. But, uh, you know, it's funny that we're walking off the floor and somebody's telling me that's the, the SIU team we remember from last year. we got to get away from that. So hopefully we can uh, get it back to what we're capable of doing. Okay, guys, thank you. I enjoyed it. Thank you.
were talking on the radio that we had a really good practice yesterday. Coach Kelton was there. And we've had some good practices, but the bottom line is just what you said. When you put the ball in the basket, that cures a lot of ills. Thoughts on uh, Nathan Shear? He really shot the ball well and shot confidently today. Put the ball in the basket, it cures a lot of ills. He feels like a million bucks right now, and uh, uh, it's great to see. And I just think overall, Wendell, it's the first time through, and I've talked about upperclassmen. We don't have many of them. But tonight, from an upperclassman standpoint, you can't get any better production from those guys. Anthony Downing, I thought, was excellent. Um, took nine shots, but had 16 points, four rebounds. Keith Pickens was three for three from the field and had five rebounds. Nate Shear obviously was five for five. So we got a whole bunch of production from the three upperclassmen that we do have, which we haven't gotten. And uh, I think that was the difference. And then I just think the younger guys did a good job. I thought Drew did a very good job uh, for his first Valley game. I thought Dorian came in and was very solid. Marcus Marshall was excellent. Um, uh, early in the second half, they had the three-quarter uh, court press, and he threw the one out of bounds and, and had to take him out to get him settled down. And then he came in and made some good plays. I thought, uh, I thought Gavin was very good in the first half. It's just the game got so small. They were playing such different lineups that we had to make some adjustments. But it's good team effort. And, and overall, like I said, when you put the ball in the basket, that cures a lot of bills. Holding that lead started to dwindle in the second half. What did you tell the kids? Well, I mean, just uh, keep doing what we're doing. We've got to get stops. Our defense uh, has got to be our calling card. But what happens, and that is when you continue to get stops, but you come down to the other end and you're shooting 30% and you can't make free throws and you can't get bunnies to go uh, close in shots, it, it wears on you. Um, but they cut into it. I thought we kept our composure. I thought we found some areas of their zone to where we got in there and we did some good things. So we just kept doing what we were doing and uh, the kids kept battling. And, you know, let's not kid anybody. Dantel Daniels is an absolute load. We can't do a whole lot with him. He's going to. He's a very good player. He's, he's big and strong. We're trying to post trap him, and then uh, he goes down with an injury, and, and that helps us a little bit. Uh, Desmar Jackson is terrific. I thought we did a very good job on him, and then him getting into foul trouble in the first half, first half helped us as well. you got to be happy with your production from the line tonight, 20 for oh, yeah. 23. Yeah I, yeah, I mean, that is just that's outstanding for us. Um, so, um, as I said, across the board, the ball went in the basket, and when that happens, now you're a, now all of a sudden you're a better team and um, it just helps you. Is the shooting not as much from out of nowhere as people might think? I know you changed things up in practice a couple weeks ago, try to get more confidence. Can you build it well, up of... you know we uh, I said a couple weeks ago that we've been shooting as much as we've ever uh, done in practice and it just hasn't paid off. And, and I'm not sitting here telling you that. Guys are going five for five and three for three in practices every day because we're still missing a lot of shots. But uh, the ball bounced our way tonight, and, and we have to build on that. But I thought we played the right way. You know, I thought I said a couple weeks ago I thought we really played the right way against Valpo. We literally just couldn't get the ball in the basket. Um, we took the trip to Alabama, Alabama A and M, and really struggled uh, in New Mexico State. But I thought the break was good for us. Um, I still don't think we're a great shooting team. Uh, we are who we are. We are, but we're certainly not going to uh, give those performances back tonight. Hopefully our guys can build on that uh, with some confidence. The way you're able to finish the game, how big is maybe a step forward is that for this young group? It's very big, but we finished it uh, with those three upperclassmen out there, and I think that you know you have to have some of that. Uh, and then you had Christian out there at times, and then, um, you know, I, like I said, I thought Marcus Marshall, when we were wavering a little bit, and they bothered us with that three-quarter court uh, token pressure. And I had to get him out to settle him down. And then I think he came back in and just made, made the big three and made some really big plays. And Southern just exclusively zoned us the second half. And, and uh, you know, to start the half, when they came out with it. And we don't have a great zone team on the floor uh, with the team that we had with, with, with Drew and Christian. But we just we found a way. And then we had to make some adjustments. And, and uh, we made plays down the stretch. And, that makes everybody look good. How was Keith able to, to do so much place on oh, no. the soreness? Oh, no, because, you know, he's really been struggling physically. But 
uh, beyond the three on three, I just or the three for three from the field. I just thought he had that activity and that energy, and it's you know he's really he's really struggled uh, with his body. Um, it, it just it, it, it's hard uh, for him, and it's it, it's hard to watch sometimes because you know the kid's hurting. Um, but it was a good day for him, and uh, physically uh, he got a lot of things done and, and uh, was active and. And when he's like that, that's a, he's a difference maker for us. Uh, and I'm not talking about from a scoring standpoint, but just doing all of those little things. Uh, so we'll see where he's at tomorrow. And it's not going to change a whole lot. Uh, you know, he's, he's got those issues, and we've just got to monitor it. And, and uh, you know, the one thing that I said early this year as a program, and even pick as a player, if we're going to move forward, he's got to practice because we never practiced him last year. Well, he's practiced every day, and I think that's been a wear and tear on him. Um, so, you know, we're going to have to talk to the trainer. We're going to have to probably, you know, cut back on some things. And, and But he's still got to stay sharp because it, you're not doing him justice if he never practices and you throw him out there in a high-level game. So we'll see. There was a lot of hype coming up into this game the past two weeks. How did you deal with that with the players? We're 2-10. and ten. There's no hype for us. We're just trying to play good basketball. So... Uh, you know, I thought our fans uh, did a great job uh, with, with welcoming Barry Henson back. And uh, it's about being classy. Uh, the guy did a lot uh, for Missouri State. Um, probably should have been to the NCAA tournament a couple times, and it didn't happen. So uh, I thought I thought our fans acknowledged him. Uh, it, it certainly was probably a, a more emotional game for him uh, than us. We were just trying to play good basketball and find a way uh, to get a win, and that's what we were able to do. So I don't think there was a lot of hype around those, you know, other elements. I mean, I think our guys were excited about the start of a new season uh, uh, with Valley play. And, and Coach, do you look at it like that too? Is, is is the start of a new season in and of itself? How would you describe Valley play? Well, I mean, it's just it's first time through for all of our guys. Every experience that we have. Now we're going to go down the road to Evansville. That's going to be a that is going to be a whole different ball game for Andrew Wilson, Dorian Williams, Marcus Marshall. Um, you know, Anthony Downing's only been through Valley play one year, so uh, all those young guys. Uh, it's just, it, but we told our guys it's a new season, and doesn't matter what you've done in the past, doesn't matter what people are saying about us. It matters what you do for these two hours. Uh, doesn't matter what you do tomorrow. It matters what you do for these two hours. And I thought our preparation, but we've been trying to prepare the right way. Uh, but I thought, you know, we put some things together tonight, and once again I thought we just put the ball in the basket. How different were they without Dane Teal? Oh, I mean, they're really different. I mean, he's a good player. Um, St. Louis kid, and he's just a load. Um, and we, you know, our whole game plan, we were collapsing on him in the first half. And, you know, Nate goes five for five, but then Jalen Pendleton goes three for three, and he hadn't made a three all year. Uh, and they were putting the ball in the basket, but we just felt like we had to protect Christian in there with him because uh, he's such a good player if you deal with him one-on-one. -on -one. So, you know, there's no doubt that when he went down, that, that played to our advantage, and I don't know what happened to him, but I hope the kid's all right. Looks like your inside game has started to really develop now. A uh, player said that's what you guys are working on in practice, maybe not going to the three-point line as much. Right, you know, and we've done that. Um, we probably have made a more concentrated effort for the last three or four weeks of just trying uh, to limit our threes uh, because we're not a very good three-point shooting team and trying to get the ball inside. And, and uh, we've been doing that. We, uh, we just, you know, we still haven't had a lot of luck when we've gotten the ball inside. So, but there's no doubt, you know, the less threes we take, um, you know, if you look at it from a statistical standpoint, we're in more games. The more threes we take because we miss so many. Um, and sometimes that means longer shot clocks and, 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 and probing. Uh, and I thought we were able to do that. Rebounding? <coughs> Rebounding was good. You know, I thought we were not a great rebounding team. And, one thing I challenged Christian on, and Drew, it's interesting with Christian looking at his statistics, Christian gets five rebounds a game. He gets, but he's even. He has 30 offensive rebounds on the year compared to 30 defensive rebounds. Well, going to the offensive glass and getting offensive rebounds are really hard. You should be, it should be the 
the other way. You should have a ton of defensive rebounds. And, and I just told him, I said, you've got to chase balls for us. Uh, Drew, you've got to chase balls for us. Uh, now, they didn't get a ton of them tonight. But when we can get the stop and then we can get the rebound, uh, it helps us a lot. We've been offensive rebounding, okay? We had 10 at New Mexico State. Now, we didn't have a whole lot to show for. How many did we have tonight? We only had five. But they only had seven. So I thought the rebounding was crucial. Any reason Drew didn't play more in the second half? I thought he was out for long stretches. Is that the well, small lineup? It's just, it's the zone. Uh, you, know, you have to you have to get the right combinations in there for the zone. And, um, you know, we started him on Dantel Daniels the second half as compared to Christian because of the foul trouble. And just with the flow of the game, uh, that's what we went with. Um, but I thought, you know, Drew played 16 minutes. He's two for three from the field. Uh, he gets two rebounds. He did some good things. And uh, uh, everybody in that locker room's happy. I don't care if you played 10 minutes or 12 minutes or you didn't play at all. And if you're not, then you don't need to be in that locker room. You're not going to be in that locker room because we're fighting and, and we're searching for everything. So uh, he'll just continue to grow and get better. Any other questions for Coach? All right, Coach, congratulations. What's up, man? Good to see you there, man. All right, good seeing you. All right, good to see you. What's up, man? All right, good to see you. Congratulations. How are you doing? You guys all right? Fantastic. Thanks. 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 Thanks.